Hello class, welcome to the last lesson in the unit on coordinate geometry and polygons. Today what we're going to learn about is just coordinate geometry in general, uh, but in specific we're going to talk about naming coordinates and using variable coordinates. This is going to be a lot of refresher of uh, pre-algebra, the Cartesian plane, uh, x-coordinates, y-coordinates, and then we're going to throw some crazy abstract spins on it. Okay, so this is how we're going to begin with this set of notes. I'm going to start with a, uh, a usual good old coordinate plane uh, with our x and y axis. And all we're going to do is graph some ordered pairs and then we're going to get abstract on you. And, uh, and hopefully through this abstract process, we can learn some things uh, uh, that can expand our mind, maybe stretch our brains a little bit. So the first ordered pair we'll graph is the order pair 5, 7. If you remember how that works, it's, uh, it's 5 on the x and 7 on the y. Okay, so you remember how the axes work. You get your x coordinate, your y coordinate. So 5 on the x, 7 on the y in the positive direction. So all we do is count, right, from 0 in the origin. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the y. There's our ordered pair of 5, 7. Now normally a good thing to do when you're ordered pairing is uh, label your points when you get there. We'll do the same thing with negative 5, 7. So that's negative 5 on the x, positive 7 on the y. So we start at 0 and we do exactly that. Negative 5 on the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 7 on the y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's our ordered pair. And as I've said before, label your stuff. So we have our, our two ordered pairs so far. Let's keep going. What about this ordered pair? Negative 5, negative 7. That's negative 5 on the x, negative 7 on the y. So we'll count as normal starting from 0, negative 5 on the x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 7 on the y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's our ordered pair down there. Again, labeling your points. Negative 5. Negative 7. And then lastly, 5, negative 7. So we'll do just that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7 in the y. And we label our order pairs. Now look what happens with quadrants. If you remember how the quadrants work, we have quadrant 1 in the, uh, in the top right, quadrant 2 in the top left, Quadrant 3 in the bottom left, and quadrant 4 in the, bottom, in the bottom right. And so we got to remember how our quadrants work, and look at what's happening with the coordinates. In quadrant 1, we have positive x, positive y. So notice both our coordinates are positive. In quadrant 2, our x is negative, our x is negative, and our y is positive. Right? So the negative x and y is positive. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, and uh, in quadrant 4, the x is positive, but the y is negative. So notice what's happening with the, qu with the quadrants. And that's, how, that's how the ordered pairs are working. All right? So we, we see how this goes. Again, this is a review, but now let's throw some abstract stuff in there. What if I start throwing in variables? Take a look at this next ordered pair. All right, so we've checked this off and done that. What about this ordered pair? A, 0. Now what does A mean? A means it's some distance we don't know. All we know is that the x-coordinate is some distance A, and the y-coordinate is 0. Where do you think this is going to end up? So notice that the y-coordinate is 0. It's not going up or down. This is going to end up on the x-axis. Okay, so it's going to end up on the x-axis some distance A. Now let's just make up a distance. Let's just say... Uh, from, from here to here is A, right? So it's like, it's like 3 and change. So we'll just say that this distance here is A. There is our ordered pair A0. OK, so that's the ordered pair. We just grasp it from, from 0 to that distance, wherever it is A, and it's on the x-axis. So that's where that ordered pair is being. Look at how abstract we're getting now, right? So that's the ordered pair A0. It's not that big of a stretch from where we've done. We just know that a is 3 and some change. What about this ordered pair? We have 0, b. That means 0 on the x and some distance b on the y. 
So 0 on the x means it's starting from here. And we're just going some distance b on the y-axis. So let's just say, uh, wherever b is, we know that this is going to end up on the y-axis. So hopefully we can tell that if the x-coordinate is 0, we're on the y-axis. If the y-coordinate was 0, we were on the x-axis. Right? Funny how that relationship works. Uh, but we've seen that in Algebra 1 before. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's pick some distance b. Let's say, let's say our distance b is like 4 and change. You know, maybe, it's, maybe it's up here. Uh, and this is our some distance b. Right? So this ordered pair then would be b0. Okay, so it's some distance. All we're just doing is the same concept. We're just getting abstract. Okay, so these are those next two order pairs. <clears throat> so A was uh, some distance 3 and 3 and change. B is some distance 4 and change. What about the next order pair? What now we're going to graph A, B. Like, holy cow, Mr. Katz, there are no numbers. True, there are no numbers. But remember, this is just the distance on the x-axis, and this is just the distance on the y-axis relative to x, relative to y. No big deal. We already know where they're at, right? So check this out. We move some distance A, which we have here, and then we go up or down some distance B, which we have here, and this is going to be where the ordered pair is. It's that same place in space just as we've normally graphed, but this now has the ordered pair A, B. Okay? So it's not that big of a stretch. We're just using abstract numbers to, 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 you know, we don't know. It's like three and change and four and change. We're not quite sure. So that's where it's going to be. It's the same principle of what we've always graphed, but it's abstract. Now, what about this little giddy up here? Negative A, negative B. Well, what does that mean? It's that distance A, but going in the negative direction on the X, and that same distance B. Hang on. Not me. So, uh, so we have the A, that distance A, but in the negative direction on the X, and then this distance B, but, uh, the, but the negative direction on the Y. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and you can already tell by looking at the order pair, what quadrant do you think it will end up in? Right? Negative A, negative B, what quadrant will it end up in? Hopefully you can see it's going to end up in quadrant 3. All right? So we should know that. Anyway, let's go ahead and graph, those, uh, graph that order pair. So it's the distance A, but in the negative direction. If you remember where it was, it's like three and some change. So it's right about here-ish, right? That's the, you know, how far it was on the A, uh, but in the negative direction. And then that distance B, but in the negative direction. So remember, B was like four and change, but we're going to go in the, in the negative direction. So here's where our A was in the negative direction. What about our B? One, two, three, four and change, right about here. OK, so, so it's the same principle of what we've done before. But now we're just throwing some abstract values on it, right? Some, some abstract thinking. Not that, you know, hopefully not that challenging. Like, hopefully you understand what's happening so far. Uh, so what about this next order pair? A, negative B. Okay, so it's A in the positive direction, but B in the negative direction. Hopefully you can tell just by seeing that order pair where it's going to end up. It's going to end up in quadrant four, right? Just by looking at the order pair, you should see where it's going to be, right? So we'll graph that. A, that 3 and change distance, and then negative B. It's that 4 and change distance, but going down, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4 and change down here. This is where A negative B is. Okay? So we're just, we're just doing a little bit of review with, with coordinate plane and getting a bit abstract. Now, the challenge is this last one. 2A and 2B. What in the world is going on with that? Okay? So... 2a and 2b, that means, that means 2 times that a distance. So we're going 3 and change to get to a. We'll, we'll have another a on top of that. We'll make it 2a. OK, so, so how is it going to work? So imagine this. Here's our distance a. What if we had another one? Remember, it was 3 and change, right? So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I can't count. 1, 2, 3. So it'd be right, right, like that ghost of a distance. It'll end up right about here. So right about there is 2a, right about there. Uh, and then what about 2b? It's twice that distance b. So here's our distance b. Remember, it was 4 and change. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It'd be about, about here, you know? 
maybe give or take, like we don't know, but that's going to be 2b, right? So that's how, how far it is. This means twice the distance. That's all it means, twice the distance. So when we put the two together, uh, you know, it might be somewhere out there. It might be on, uh, 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 on a corner on some, on some coordinate grids we know, but we don't know because we don't know what a is. We don't know what b is, but we do know that whatever a is, 2a is twice that, and whatever b is, 2b is twice that. Okay, so it's no big deal. We're just doing a little bit of abstract work, okay? So uh, if we understand what 2a is twice and 2b is twice. So this is, you know, remember you can, twice means two times, right? So different ways of reading the same thing. Two times a is twice a, just a is second time, right? It's a and then another one. So this is the, basically the notes for our coordinate geometry, throwing a little bit of abstract stuff in there now. Now why this? And why now? When we're talking about polygons, <laughs> here, here's why. We're going to see uh, some interesting applications of what we just, what we just did uh, with all the stuff we've learned about polygons. So take a look at this, uh, this question. What are the coordinates of the vertices of each figure? So in this example, we have a figure, S, Q, R, E. Here's an S, here's a Q, here's an R, here's an E. And, uh, and we're, we're going to name the coordinates. But we have no information, right? We have this, this abstract thing. And all we know is that the distance SQ is 2A. So from S to Q is 2A. We know that. And then we have this, this little piece of information. The axis bisect each, each side. So each axis bisects the side. And remember what bisect means? Cut in half. And half means two equal parts, right? So this distance from S to Q is 2A, like all the way there. And bisecting is cutting it in half. How far do you think it is from the y-axis to Q, right? If the whole distance is, uh, is 2A and the axis bisect it, hopefully you know that means cutting in half. Half of 2A is just A, right? We know that, OK? We should know that. Now, if this is what's happening with A, and we know that the distance from the y-axis to S is also A, what else can we tell? Right, we can tell a whole bunch of stuff. Why? Because of this word, square. Now, because of the word square, we also know that if this is 2A, then this is 2A, and this is 2A, all the sides are congruent, right? So that means, that means the distance from the origin to the edge is A, and the distance from the origin to the edge is also A. All we need to do is put the coordinates down. So if you recall from our notes where, uh, where the quadrants are, in the quadrant 1, our x coordinate is positive, our y coordinate is positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative, y is positive, 3, negative, negative, and quadrant 4, positive, negative. So what does that have to do with this? Well, we know the distance to everything is in this example is a. So the goal is the coordinates of the vertices. So we have vertex s, vertex q, vertex r, and vertex e. So here's our vertex s. Where is this ordered pair? From the origin, we had to travel to the left, which means negative a. And then we had to travel up, which means positive a. So that's negative a on the x and positive a on the y. So those are the coordinates, right? So we're naming the coordinates of the vertex. And remember, it's the same principle as what we've done, but we're dealing with abstract. How about q? OK, so from origin, we went to positive a to go out here. And then up to q, we went positive a to go up, right? So the ordered pair of Q was positive A, positive A. OK, so we're taking that, that same principle, but some distance A. We're just putting some abstract stuff on there. Now, what about R? R is down, is down here, right? So how did we get down there? From the origin, we went out to the positive A, but then we went down. And down is negative. So we went out to positive A for the X, but then we went down for the Y, that negative distance. So the ordered pair for R is a and the negative a. And then lastly, the ordered pair for e. How could we get to e? We went out to negative a, and then we went down to negative a. 
So negative A, negative A. Right, so we're taking that concrete stuff that we have known about from, from, uh, from coordinate planes, and we're just throwing some abstract stuff on it. And that's how we name the coordinates of each vertex, okay? So that's how that, uh, that particular example works. Let's do some more, because practice is always good. So in this example, I'll hide that little note. I'll get to it in a second. In this example, we're, we're going to do the same thing, but with, uh, with a triangle now, okay? We're going to name all the coordinates, and we have TRI, an isosceles triangle, where TI is 2A. This is isosceles now. So what do we know about isosceles triangles is that the base angles are the same, and the opposite sides are congruent, and, uh, and well, TI is 2A. So all the way from, from T to I is 2A, like way out here is 2A. But then, then we have this neat thing. The y-axis is the median. Do you remember what the median does? The median goes from vertex to midpoint. Ah, vertex to midpoint. Now, what in the world does a midpoint do? The midpoint cuts a segment in half. So if the y-axis goes from vertex to midpoint, that means this point here, O, is the exact middle of TI. So what does that mean in regards to all these distances, right? So if the whole distance from T to I is 2A, and this point 0 is the midpoint, what can we say about the distance from the origin out to the uh, vertex at I? How long is that? If the whole thing is 2A, this is the midpoint, this, of course, is A. We should know that. Okay, so now we're ready to name some uh, coordinates. We have T, R, I. Okay, so we're going to find the coordinates for T, the coordinates for R, and the coordinates for I. So if we start at T, uh, well, let's skip T. Let's start at I because we just talked about that first. Now, where in the world is this vertex at I? So we went A, however far that is from the origin, we went out A, positive A, and we didn't go up or down, right? So we went out positive A, but did not go up or down. So what does that mean for the Y coordinate? If you recall from what we were graphing, that means that the Y coordinate is 0. Okay, so hopefully you recall that. So our vertex at, uh, at point I, we went out positive A, and we didn't go up or down. We stayed at 0, which is a number. Okay, 0 is a number, so we have the Y coordinate. So what would that mean for, what would that mean for T, right? So if A is out that direction, how far did we go out from the origin to this direction to get to T? We went out negative A. Okay, so that's how far that went. It's possible for that to occur. So we have negative A, and we didn't go up or down at 0. The only other thing is, is R. How in the heck are we going to figure out where R is? Well, first let's notice something. R is right on the y-axis. So what does that mean for the x-coordinate? Did the x-coordinate go to the left or to the right at all? No, it did not. So we should already know that the x-coordinate is 0. Okay, We should already know that. The x-coordinate is going to be 0 because we didn't go either left or right. So how are we going to tell how far up this is? How are we going to tell where in the world R is? Can we, can we say it's, uh, it, it depends on what A is? is? Is there any relationship between how high R is with where A is? Do we know any information? And, uh, and the only information we know is that it's an isosceles triangle. We know this is the median, so we know this is perpendicular. We know these two angles are congruent. We know the triangles are congruent. But we have no way, not even with trigonometry yet, can we tell how high R is with, with A. We don't know. Okay, so we just don't know. We have no other information. So this means however high this is, is completely separate, completely independent from A. Now we have that note. If we're dealing with a distance that is completely independent of a variable we're using, we can so use a completely different variable. So how high R is has nothing to do with the distance of A. So what does that mean? We can use a completely different variable. And normally we can use, let's say, variable B. OK, so let's say uh, we went 0, B, some other distance. Because we can't tell how high it is based off of A. We don't know if B is twice A. We don't know if it's 3 fourths A. We don't know if it's 7 times A. We have no way of knowing, so we can just use a different variable. So some neat stuff that we can tell. And that's how we can find the uh, coordinates for that. More work. <laughs> this one's some fun. Let's go. Fun stuff. So more naming coordinates. Again, what are the coordinates of each of the vertex? 
uh, each of the vertices. So here we have a, 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 a shape, R-E-C-T, which is a rectangle. And that means some cool stuff. So we know we're going to be finding the coordinates of, of each vertex. Let's go ahead and name those. Now, it's going to give us some information. We have a height of A. Ah, the height of the rectangle is A. So from, uh, from the base to the top is A. Now, if it's a rectangle, we know it has a height of A. Well, guess how high it is? It's A. All these things are, are parallel, right? They're, they're, it's a rectangle. They're parallel and they're congruent. Now, the length is 2B, OK? So from all the way out is 2B. That's what we know. That's what we know. Now, can we, can we assume that, that this is cutting 2B in half? No, we can't assume it. So we have to read this. The y-axis bisects EC and RT. So the y-axis bisects right there. That means it's cutting in half, OK? Half of two equal parts. So if the, if the y-axis is bisecting that, right now we know, now we know that this distance is b and this distance is b. OK, so we can tell uh, all that stuff because of the word bisect. And now we can name all of our ordered pairs. So it doesn't matter where we start. Let's start with t. Why not? Let's start with coordinate, coordinates t. So where in the world is t? Well, we went out from the origin. We went out b direction, and we did not go up or down. So we stayed at 0. So the ordered pair for t, we went out b and stayed at 0. That is the ordered pair for t. That's how that works. Uh, what about c? Well, for c, we went out b from the origin. We went out b, and then we went up a. Ah, so our ordered pair is b, a. Remember, it's always x, y, left, right, up, down. It doesn't matter if it's alphabetical or not, so it makes no difference. So we went out B and went up A. There's our ordered pair. What about for our coordinate at, at E? From the origin, we went out B, but we went in the negative direction. OK, so we went out into the negative direction for B, and then we went up positive A units. So our ordered pair for E was negative B, positive A. And our ordered pair for R, we went out from the origin to negative B and stayed there on the axis. So we did not go up or down. So we have negative B and 0. Okay, so that's, uh, that is how the coordinates work, that, that abstract application of stuff. Let's do a bit more thinking. Okay, so now we're going to do, I love this uh, algebra stuff. So take a look at this. So here we're going to use variable coordinates. This diagram shows a parallelogram. So we know it's a parallelogram with all the neat stuff that comes with it. It has the vertex at the origin. OK, so then that's at the origin. And one side along the x-axis. We can tell that because the y-coordinate is 0. What are the coordinates of d, the point of intersection of the diagonals of that parallelogram? And how do we know? Well, first things first, let's, let's explain the x-coordinate of vertex b. Look at that vertex b. Look at the x-coordinate, 2a plus 2b. How do we know that? Okay, How do we know that that is the distance uh, uh, out here? Okay, So we know from the origin to point a is 2a. And we know that it is a parallelogram okay, with, with congruent opposite sides. And this vertex starts at 2b. Okay, So from, from boop, 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 boop. This distance is 2b, OK? So we know that. And it's parallel and congruent, because it's a parallelogram. And from here, from this distance all the way out here is 2a. So how far would it be all the way out here to where this x-coordinate is? 2a plus 2b. That's how we know that the x-coordinate of, of our vertex at b is 2a plus 2b. So that's how we can tell. Okay, so I wanted to first explain that x coordinate. Kind of neat stuff. But anyway, back to the question. What are the coordinates of d, the point of intersection of the diagonals, and how do we know? Well, let's draw a little picture real quick. We've got a diagonal here and a diagonal here. And so we're going to figure out what's going on with, with point d. Now, what do we know about the diagonals of a parallelogram. Ha! We need to remember that in parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. 
So in this little diagram of the, of, the, of the diagonals, we know that the diagonals bisect each other. Two equal parts, OK? Now, what can we tell? Well, <laughs> what's going on? What, if we look at just, just this one diagonal, what is point D? OK, or we look at the second diagonal from C to A. What is point D? It is the midpoint. So we have to bring in the fact that that, that middle piece, if it's, if it's bisecting each other, that point D is the midpoint of the line segment. So that brings in this whole other situation. Remember, we can find midpoint. How do we find midpoint? Remember how midpoint works. It's your average x and your average y. OK, so remember the midpoint formula, the average x and the average y. We don't even need the formula, just the concept of it. So what's happening with point D? Well, it's the, it's the midpoint from origin to B or the midpoint from C to A. Uh, you can feel free to do that, but uh, I'd much rather would look at the, the midpoint from the origin to B. So how does this work? If we're going to add our x-coordinates, this is 0, 0, right? So 0 plus 2a plus 2b. 2a plus 2b, but we're taking the average of it. That's going to be our x-coordinate for this. And then our y-coordinate is the average y from 0 to 2c. So that's 2c, but we're going to divide that by 2. So what will we end up with as the coordinates of that midpoint? We have 2a plus 2b divided by 2. How does that work? Well, that's 2 divided by all these things, like being divided by 2. If you remember how division works, we call it 2a divided by 2 plus 2b divided by 2, which leaves us with a plus b. Wait, what? Yes, I know. It's funny how that works. But remember how we divide fractions. We can separate the denominator. It's 2a divided by 2 plus 2b divided by 2. And then our 2's cancel, leaves with a plus b. So our, y, our x coordinate is actually a plus b. What would that mean for our y coordinate then? 2c divided by 2 leaves us with c. So the ordered pair of, the, of, our, of our d there, the intersection of the diagonals, is a plus b for the x coordinate and c for the y coordinate. Isn't that fun? Could we have done the same thing? If we looked at it from C to A, yeah. Remember how the midpoint works, the average x coordinate. 2b plus 2a divided by 2. We already have that. 2b plus 2a divided by 2. And then we have 2c plus 0 divided by 2. So no matter how we're looking at it, we're going to end up with the same coordinate of the intersection of the diagonals of that parallelogram. OK, so we're just using that abstract concept. It's just the same stuff that we normally do. We're just throwing in some abstract mixes, which, which means algebra. And I love me some algebra. So that's how that works. Now, we're going to end this lesson on a really bad question that came from the online textbook quiz. This is a horrible question. We're going to see why. This is what we're going to do. We're going to name the coordinates of an equilateral triangle ABC with the base measurement AB equaling 2A along the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw the x-axis. Let's go ahead and draw an A and a B. Now we know it's an equilateral triangle, so we can go ahead and put a C there. And that's all we know. OK, so it's along the x-axis. It has a height of 3A. So the height all the way, or is the square root of 3A. That's what we know. And we know that the base is 2A. Now. What don't we know? Uh, we don't know where the heck on the x-axis this is. So that's, that's problem number one. We don't know where. We don't know where the origin is, right? We don't know if the origin is way out here. We don't know if the origin is way out here. So we have to make an assumption based off of the ordered pair choices that the origin bisects AB. Okay, That's what we have to make the assumption of. Or the origin is at A, or the origin is at B. We just don't know. So let's take a look at these choices, and we'll see why this is a horrible problem. So if this is an equilateral triangle, okay, and the height is the, the square root of 3a, and we have the from a to b is 2a, that means from a to c is also 2a, and from c to b is also 2a. So can we say that a is at 0, 0? Let's look at choice a. 
could B be at 0 to A? No, it's impossible. Okay, so we know it can't be choice A. Let's look at choice B, the first order pair. The coordinates of A are at 2A0. Is that possible? Yes, it is. How do we know? Well, let's, I'll get back to that in a second. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe A is the origin. I'll get back to this in a second. Maybe A is the origin. We have A at 0, 0. That means B is at 2A, 0. That looks fair. And then C is at A, halfway, A is square root of 3A. So you might think that D is the correct answer. In fact, that's what the textbook says. D is the correct answer. But I challenge you that this is a bad question. Now, how do we know? What if we had the very same concept and we have a triangle that looks like this. Could this also be an equilateral triangle that fits all of the descriptions given? Yes, this is triangle ABC. This is equilateral triangle ABC. The distance from A to B is 2A, and the height is the square root of 3 times A. So all this is still the same. But what if I had B as the origin? Could that be possible? Yes, it can. If B is the origin, then the ordered pair of A is, guess what, at 2A0. And the ordered pair of C would be at, well, A squared of 3A. It's totally possible for this to occur. Now, if that's the case, what in the world is going on with answer choice B? Is answer choice B not also a possibility? Yes, it is. OK, so we have the ordered pair at A, 2A0, check. Order pair at z, 0, 0, check. Order pair at c, a root 3a, check. So this is also a correct answer. But ladies and gentlemen, this was multiple choice. So I put zero value in these multiple choice tests. It's important to think. Anyway, that's how this quick quiz works. I just wanted to show that example that you can do a little thinking uh, because we have no idea. This question's horrible. We have no idea where the origin is. And without that, we have two possibilities. So uh, anyway, that is coordinate geometry in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. We talked about naming coordinates and using variable coordinates. That's it for the unit. We've really hammered home some polygons. Take care. I'll see you.